Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Wendy Hembrock. I'm Brent Barrett. And I'm Kevin Batchelder. And tonight we continue our rewatch of Arcane Season 1. We're going to finish up with the final trilogy of episodes uh, 7 through 9 as we get ready to uh, anticipate Season 2. Uh, this is obviously the end of Season 1, but, so we're all spoilers all the time. Uh, and I, we don't have any particular uh, insight into what's coming in Season 2 other than our trailer, so we won't be spoiling anything for Season 2. Uh, if you are not familiar with our main show, Tuning Into Sci-Fi TV, we have an accompanying Discord channel that you can come by and join. You can talk about Arcane, you can talk about any kind of TV that's genre, and really anything else. Uh, we'd love to have you. Absolutely. Um, it's a great place to be and hang out and talk about everything. Like like Wendy said, not just TV. You're talking about music and uh, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's a really cool community. It's a great way. Keep talking about stuff between podcasts and vidcasts and everything else. Whatever you're nerdy for. So let's get talking about uh, these episodes, which we're going to be talking about. Episode 7, The Boy Savior. Episode 8, Oil and Water. And episode nine, the monster you created. Uh, first up, we're going to talk about some general thoughts about these three episodes and our rating for our rewatch. For me, this was a great um, culmination. I thought they paid off things that we'd hope or I had hoped would be paid off in terms of the Jinx and Vi uh, relationship and where it was going to get back to or move to. Uh, we also had the overall dynamics between this probably pending war between Piltover and I'll call it Zon and the main factions within that. So for me, it was a great culmination and payoff for pretty much every character. I also liked how we had um, some characters that had sort of been paired up as we'd gone through season one. And they sort of realigned some of those pairings as we got into, especially the final episode. Um, I would give this 9 out of 10 shark RPGs. Excellent. Um, I also think it, it, this, these episodes just continue to build. I mean, the show just built and built and built and built and built. And, and the final episodes really did pay off the, the final. We'll get there. But the, the final bits of the last episode were just. Oh my God, stuff. Um, but as you said, there were just the characters just got deeper and deeper, and and pairings you talked about. But I mean, just I mean, stuff. Some stuff Silco did. I just we'll talk about that later. But uh, just blew my mind. I didn't expect that kind of thing. But um, I would give this all of these in our rating system. I'm not going to go numbers, but uh, in our rating system. Mm -hmm. Probably like high watch it soon's in the last one. Like I watch it now. It's just like amazing. I loved it. Yeah, I'm very similar to you folks, and I think many of the folks who are listening have watched that. You know, just some incredible stuff. A ton of great payoffs, as you said, Wendy. You know, things that have been building, uh, whether it's relationship or plot or setup for some stuff in season two. Obviously, too. Now that you get to see this kind of stuff, certainly on a rewatch, you can kind of see some things that. Uh, are probably going to become important things to see going forward to wonder what it's going to all be. Uh, I got so many things highlighted and notes to talk about as far as favorite moments or scenes. I got way too much. You folks are going to have to kind of keep me in check, I think, especially that final episode and the, the final 16 minutes of it there. So, yeah, when we use our ratings on tuning into sci-fi T, you know, uh, the watch it now tends to be the highest rating I, for me, especially by the, the ninth episode. I mean, watch it now is so far in the rearview mirror <laughs> because mm -hmm. these are so much above that. It's because uh, I've watched so many reactors too for that uh, final episode, both several months ago when I first watched the show for the first time. And just this past weekend, when I watched episode nine, I went down another rabbit hole for a couple hours watching a bunch of new reactors who have watched it in the last six months. So uh, just awesome stuff. Cool. Well, that's going to be the first thing we're going to talk about is the awesome stuff, the highlights. Um, 
I'm probably going to steal the one that everyone wants to talk about, <laughs> which will be, <laughs> um, I'll call it the mad, the mad tea party, uh, <laughs> followed by the, um, the, the shark RPG, um, or whatever it's called a very cool, um, effect and weapon. But, um, the, for me, that was one of the key character moment culminations because Vi finally recognizes that powder is not there anymore. She she really s- sort of um, recognizes that Jinx is now Jinx, and she's not aware of um, how Singed has further altered her. So that'll be interesting to see in the future, um, because for me, the the it really is that almost door closing on whether or not you'll ever see powder again. But it was horrible. That it was it was horrible and chilling when she's telling um, Vi, you know, just just kill Caitlin and we're we're good. You know, <laughs> I'll believe you. I'll trust you. Um, and then when um, she also has Silco there and he, you know, basically gets killed by her crossfire tantrum, um, you know, he, he still is loyal to her. And, you know, she had written him off. She she assumed that he was going to turn her in um, in order to have his dream of Zahn. And it it's it was really well done that basically, you know, he had to make this horrible choice and he, I think I did believe him. I did believe that he was not going to turn her in. So, um, and then we have, you know, after that, the, the shot of, you know, basically the, the, uh, the start of the next war (laughs) essentially at the very end. So it went from the very personal of the two sisters to the bigger, what have you done to this larger truce that Silco had just ne- negotiated with Jace to now, okay, you've instigated, you know, probably the next, the next level of the war. Yeah. And you, <clears throat> you kind of touched on it, but kind of building up to that scene. One of the things I really loved was the, um, and we're all jumping to episode nine. There's a lot of good stuff, but, um, the scene with Silco at Vander's statue, where you know he's drinking, and then he pours one into the into the water fountain uh, for Vander, I guess. But he's he's talking to him and and um, you know talking about how you know he he's so close he can have what he wants, but why can't he give her up? And then I love his final line: "Is is there anything so undoing as a daughter?" You know, so we know at that point. Um, He's probably not going to give her up, and then of course, like you said, he he, he admits that to her as he's dying um, after she accidentally shoots him. I mean, she goes nuts and starts shooting, but I don't think she meant to shoot him, but she did. So yeah, it was it was pretty pretty great scene. I just I just love that scene at the at the statue at the fountain. Yeah, I think we'll talk a little more about the very ending here, but yeah, the. It's so many components to that, just so many uh, of, of what it means and, and the decisions that uh, Jinx, some of them are decisions, some of them are just reactions, you know, shooting Silco, uh, very much, I think, the reaction to hearing him cock the gun that she put down on the table out of protection for Vi. So, you know, that that's just some amazing stuff there. I mean, just to give us a change up and talk about another awesome scene in this set of three is the end of seven with the whole showdown on the bridge between echo and jinx i mean oh you stole mine (laughs) i was gonna make it my next one (laughs) yeah i mean visually um music tied in uh importance to the story um playing into the possible um I don't know you call it power or skill set or something that that Echo has with time, the ability to to rewind or go back from you know to relive his path to you know attacking her and getting the upper hand but not being able to pull the trigger. I mean, even the little the little firefly bug things that uh, she Jinx created, 
you know, that's one of those payoffs that on a rewatch and watching some of the, you know, analysis videos, there's multiple scenes throughout the whole first season showing her working on those. <laughs> and then we get the payoff with the whole lot of them coming in. And, and you know, just, gosh, that, that one on rewatch is just something to behold. Yeah, you mentioned that. I actually rewatched it a couple of times because you have that interesting framing of them as children playing the game and how he's it, it's unclear it was unclear to me who was remembering that if it was both of them or not and um everything about this the animation style the music it was really uniquely done that whole scene and i wasn't sure who died after the explosion um but but I was thrilled that Echo was still alive when he was. Yeah. It took a, it took a while for the show to reveal that. It took Heimerdinger to go walking through the yeah the town. But yeah. Wendy, did you have another one? Oh, I did. Uh, the, you just mentioned it, actually. Heimerdinger, when he um, finds Echo and then he takes him to the treehouse. And I loved how... It, we now have a complete flip of, you know, Heimerdinger went from being on the, the height of the council to nobody's interested in you down here <laughs> to now he finds the secret clubhouse and he's mm. joined, joined the rebels. Absolutely. Yeah. It, he's, he's an interesting character. He's kind of, kind of taken a sideline towards the second part of the, of the season, uh, which I thought, thought was kind of sad. Hopefully we'll get to see more of him in the next season. Um, but I thinking of some, some serious highlights, I had the echo and jinx fight on there. The two youngest ones fighting, just like you, Kevin brought up. Um, I also, again, I'm a Vi Caitlin shipper. Uh, I, I am not at all sh ashamed to admit that. So I loved the two opposite ends. Well, three, if you think about it, but two definitely, um, extremes of their, of their budding relationship. The one with them lying down on Caitlin's bed and, and, you know, talking, and then uh, Caitlin moves out to kind of comfort Vi, and she she returns the 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 action. Um, but then later on, uh, you know, Vi telling Caitlin, "Forget about her. We're oil and water. Never meant to be." Uh, I love that those two scenes and how they contrast. Of course, there's the stuff at the very end with the two of them too. But uh, those two scenes were a nice contrast on their relationship. And I'm a big, like I said, big shipper, so I really kind of enjoyed that. Yeah, another one that sticks out too was the the Savika and Vi showdown. You know, kind of the the sequel, the second one that occurred in the series, and the one that's in the final episode. Um, it's just a talk about a knockdown drag out. I mean, such such a great job on the visuals of the fight, and her just about being defeated, but then having the vision of Vander to kind of get her up off the mat, you know, and go back at it and, and finally be able to knock out Savika. And just when we're thrilled for that, she just drops her head a bit at the bar and who's behind her, but Jinx knocking her out. So, you know, man, just when you think you can take a deep breath, you get a little shock value. Yeah. The, um, you were talking about Caitlin and Vi, the, the thing that I found, you know, was a little bit of a twist uh, when they team up to go to the council and then they're not believed. And then we have this rift between them about what to do yeah. and Vi is, you know, I'm going back, you know, it's, it's part of that oil and water mm -hmm. component. Um, but you also have her teaming up with Jace then and, I actually really liked that whole sequence when they go back to the Undercity and they have their big fight. Um, and she has those gloves, you know, she has a, a new version of the the gloves that were the Vander gloves um, <clears throat> that she uses in that fight. And then, you know, she's ready to do all that violence. Chase is not prepared for what it means. So he, you know, when he kills that kid accidentally, um, you know, he all of a sudden is like, yeah, you're right. We, you know, this is not the way, but Vi is like, we're, we're in it. <laughs> this is where we, where we're at. Um, and that turns out to be 
um, a very important, it turned out to be an important kid because it was one of Silco's lieutenant's ch uh, children. So that, you know, ratchets everything up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 that scene where Vi finds the uh, the gauntlets, the mining gloves or gauntlets was was great. And at the end of the big fight, where she he's like, "Give me them, give them, give them back to me." And she's like, "No." <laughs> they're about to fight, and he's like, "Oh, whatever." Oh, um, that was great. Um, I also, of course, you, you kind of mentioned the lieutenant who lost her 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 son, but I love that that little bit where. Because I didn't know what was going to happen when when her and the the one with the middle jaw come in, thinking that they've convinced his right hand to help them overthrow yeah. Silco, and I really didn't. The first time I saw this, uh, I did not know what was going to happen. And when she draws, you know, her blade comes out, I'm like, oh no, she's she's going to do it. How, what's going to happen? And she swings and she kills the guy with the jaw. And I love her her back and forth. I don't remember the exact line, but back back and forth with Silco about uh, him her, him saying, you know, why not? You know, this guy, huh? She's like, yeah, he, you know, he basically he wasn't good enough. Um, but you, know, you better be careful. There'll be more coming along, you know, sort of thing. So I I, I thought that was interesting. Um, and if he had continued on uh, past the end of episode nine, uh, I'm sure we might have seen some more attempts to uh, overthrow him. But I mean, in a, in a sense, Jinx is kind of taking his place. So. Yeah, that's well, an interesting that's... thought, though. I mean, who who's going to follow her? Yeah, there's yeah. there's a power vacuum there. What's what's going to happen? Yeah, well, some of that we got a little bit of in the teasers and the trailers, but I guess it's going to be a very interesting thing to see where that goes. Well, Savika's kind of a wild card, right? So mm -hmm. she'd be one of the most likely candidates. Um, and Jinx basically got some mostly true information from her the last time that they had a conversation. So it's going to be interesting to see if um, they can come to some uh, truce kind of alliance or not. Or if Savika is like, you're crazy. And, <laughs> um, you know, what is Jinx's real plan, right? Silco had a vision. I don't know what Jinx's vision is going to be. I burn I think, it down. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we saw that from the trailer. But I think well, yeah, beyond <laughs> beyond the immediate, yes. yes I think she had that. essential. Well, yeah, you're right. I was going to say when when Silco talks to her, he talks to her as if they had a shared vision of uh, that was kind of Vander's vision too, right? To to have independence for this this city. Yeah. But uh, Jinx, I mean, yeah, she was along for the ride. Uh, but she was always doing her own thing, and and the trailer kind of hints that uh, that's not really her vision. Her vision's yeah. one city. That one goes down. That one burns. <laughs> this one stays. Kevin, did you have another highlight? I could go on for hours. So no, let's. <laughs> I just have one last one. Sure, go which for was, it. Um, which was Victor and Sky. Um, right. So we see. Oh, yes. So you know, Victor's dying. I'm very sympathetic towards Victor. Then he goes and gets shimmered with Singe, and um, he's now even more intertwined with the Hex Core because he puts more of his blood into it. He's in the middle of like supercharging himself when Sky, the assistant, comes in, and she's been practicing her, singing her little speech about how great she thinks he is and she really wants to help him out. <laughs> and then she's horrified to see him getting sucked into the hex core, whatever's happening and yeah. tries to save him and ends up getting disintegrated. And I don't understand enough about how the magic works in this, whether that's a good thing, like some of her went into the hex core and maybe that will be a good thing. Um, but definitely some of his shimmer went into that thing too. And now he seems to be even more intertwined with it. So that was really interesting to me because I've been on the rewatch a lot more um, interested in paying attention to him as a character and what he's doing. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see where we go in season two. Yeah, and I, I love it. I can't take credit for seeing all of it myself, but again, on the rewatch, 
picking up on some of it and then from some of the other folks who do the deep analysis to talk about the parallels between when he was younger, when he was, you know, by the little river trying to keep up with his little boat but couldn't yep. because of his leg. And then here in this thing, once he gets the shimmer and such, it's him, you know, by the docks running at full speed, yeah. passing yeah. boats and, uh, you know, uh, the parallels and the possible meaning of that. Um, you know, it's, it, it's going to be interesting too, with the whole hex core, the, 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 you know, the, the different variations that have been created to be used for whether it's Jinx's weapon or that, how much more that's going to get, um, like its own little, like almost like it became sentient, uh, you know, when it wanted to consume, when it, once it interacted with living matter um you know whether it was the plants or victor or taking sky or what you know it's going to be interesting to see if that grows out of control kind of like heimerdinger has been telling everybody to worry about you know in season two it's interesting yeah, you I... mentioned sentience though kevin because it just it reminded that I, I took a note that uh when vi and savika were fighting um and one of the gauntlets had been broken and she discarded it and she's fighting with the other one. There was a moment where she didn't know that the gauntlet had a shield mm -hmm. and she's mm -hmm. about to, you know, the fatal blow is about to come and the shield pops up. Is that, was there some sort of AI in there? Did it just, I mean, it couldn't have been a proximity thing or else it would have put the shield up long ago <laughs> with a lot of a blows and attacks. So what was going on there? She didn't even know that app. That was a thing. That was kind of cool. Yeah. That's an excellent parallel point to make out. Yep. Yep. Cause she was a goner without that. Yeah. It will be interesting to see how, um, I'll call them their interactions with their own particular version. So like Vi with her gauntlets or Jace with his giant hammer or Victor with all the stuff that, you know, his leg and everything else, what it does to them, you know, <laughs> is it, um, you know, as the episode is titled The Monster You Created, there's lots of implications for what is the monster in that. Um, oh, yeah, several. You, you know? That's what great story <laughs> I mean, they, yeah. they're all the monsters <laughs> <laughs> um, they've been creating. Yeah. Well, I, any... I, I'm reminded, um, sorry, my son, who does play League of Legends um, and also have, has watched Arcane, informed me that uh, most of the characters we run into in Arcane are not in the game. Uh, Vi and Jinx and Jace are, um, and it's interesting that Vice or Vi, Vi, not Vice, uh, Vi with her gloves. Those are her weapons in the game. Those those gloves, gloves those gauntlets, and the um, the hammer that Jace has. That's his weapon in the game. So those are iconic for them in the game, which is which I thought was kind of cool. And Kevin had shared a, a recap video which I watched. And that recapper pointed out that um, the shark, he, I think he called it a bazooka or cannon or something. Um, that's her weapon in the game, mm. too, uh, Jinx's. The minigun as well, right? I think she has both. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. he was all excited when they showed up. I, did, you were, I think you were about to ask if we have any more. I did have one little one. It's not a yeah. big one. But Marcus, who is the corrupt enforcer, who dies on the bridge, um, I kind of liked his moment of, because it resolved his dilemma. You know, his family was being threatened by Silco unless he did this horrible thing. And he didn't want to do either one. He didn't want to lose his family. He didn't want to do this horrible thing. And in a sense, he got his release. But I like how he had a moment to try to tell, um, I think, who was he telling it to? Vi? Caitlin. 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 About, you know, to, to tell his daughter, his his family, you know. Uh, what he what he thought, but um, boy, that was kind of an interesting end for that character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had he had no he had no way out. He had no no good outcome. It was the for best him. thing that could have happened to him, basically. <laughs> yeah, which is sad to say. Yeah. Yeah. So low lights. You have any low lights? I, I don't do. have any. Go ahead. I I, I, I'm trying to remember what it is now. I didn't write it down. But as okay. we were talking, <laughs> it occurred to me 
So if you have any, Kevin, go for it while I think about it. No, I do. I do not. I am just. Oh I'm goodness. overwhelmed with how much I enjoyed this season and especially this last. Oh, set of three. I remember my low light as we were doing this, and it's it's a whole character and a whole little story arc. I think that they did the flashback of Mel way too late in the season. By this point, we didn't need those flashbacks. We didn't really want them to tell us more about these characters, especially since um, I don't think she she, she had been. An interesting character, but not as integral as some of the others. So the flashbacks, for, you know, for for Vi and Jinx and, and even Caitlin were worthwhile. But this one I wasn't so sure about, and definitely I I think a low light for me was her mother's character coming into this. I I just I wasn't interested. It it, it was like this is almost cliche storytelling. You know, we got the 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 the, the harsh mother and the and the daughter who doesn't agree with her, who's 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 more into peace sort of thing. It, it seemed cliche and stereotype to me and and i just didn't like it so in my opinion that's the only low light is that i i think that trying to go deeper on mel happened too late if it happened earlier i probably would have dug it a lot more and then the mother was just i just wasn't into her yeah i can i can see where earlier in the season that would have been better because then as we could watch some of her actions of of you know politically staging things and being there to for jace would have made a little more sense well, not made more sense. They, it would have made it richer for, for understanding sake to know where she had come from on that. So, yeah, I, I can see where that timing seems like it's just to try to set up some season two stuff. Uh, it definitely felt like set up for season two, especially I, I do agree that the, the warlord mother is a little over the top. Um, and it's kind of an effort, an attempt to be like, Okay, Mel's morally questionable, but now meet her horrible mother so that she she's looks not great. as she's, yeah, she yeah, looks, yeah. exactly. <laughs> great in comparison. Um, and you know, now she's supposedly gonna be the, the protector of Piltover and doesn't want the, the hex core to fall into the wrong hands when she's been the one advancing its use uh, you know, the most and and is responsible for shutting down the one person who was wanting to slow their role on using it, you know, she convinced Jace that Heimerdinger had to go and, you know, she's been playing all those uh, board pieces. So it does feel to me though, like that was set up for season two. And I'm going to be very curious if we don't find out that the mother had a relationship with Silco or had some back channels to other people in the undercity going on as well for for my low light i would say that the flashback had some cool bits i, I like the bit where we i liked how we got to learn how her family came into power i liked the little scene with the i guess she's a princess or something she didn't look like she was the leader but um daughter of the, of the leadership family and, yeah. and how mel wanted to just strip her of everything and, and banish her uh which shows a lot about mel's character compared to her mother who just turns around and kills her just yeah. beheads her I thought that was uh, an interesting little bit of the flashback. Yeah, brutal. Really, really brutal. And that was the only thing that really worked for me about the the conversation with the mother because she clearly recognizes how bad things can go from her own homeland and is trying to insulate them from that happening. But you know, it's the mom's here. <laughs> She's yeah. the, you know, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. So we've talked about favorite characters in our prior episodes. Uh, any characters change, realign favorite characters at this point? Even more so than before. Caitlin. Um, I said by in the, in the middle batch that she'd become my favorite by that point, and and by the end of this one, uh, she's still on my favorite list. And you know, I, I dig all a lot of the other characters as well. Obviously, Jinx Vi, um, but Caitlyn's still top of the list for me. Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean I I certainly on the whole rewatch all all of the episodes through have a much stronger appreciation for Caitlyn, the growth of her character. You know what she's done to to try to expand on, uh, you know, her view of the world with the way her parents have always protected her and want to keep her away from anything that could be dangerous or anything outside of what they think 
she should be doing. So I really appreciated more what she was going through. Um, you know, when she grabbed, uh, you know, Jinx's gun to try to threaten her over there at the, at the, uh, mad tea party. Uh, I was like, yeah, I thought you had learned, <laughs> but, but I get why she did it and she's still lucky to be alive, but, but I get that. But no, I appreciate her, her more certainly through the rewatch. I mean, the, the sister relationship is the core for me has been in many other shows and certainly was here uh, and just feeling so much more for Jinx. Uh, you know, watching it play out again, it, in some ways, even more painful. I mean, appreciation for some of the things, but it, it's funny what, what occurred to me um, on the rewatch and, and definitely the rewatch of the end of the ninth episode again, after, after she kills Silco. I mean, she's what, I don't know, maybe 16 years old at this point, maybe at, at somewhere in that yeah, range, somewhere about that, somewhere about that. And at this point in her life, she has had three fathers or father figures. They've all died violently and she killed two of them. So in terms of understanding why someone is messed up, there you go. I don't know if she killed two of them, Kevin. She didn't kill Vander. She didn't kill Vander. She, her actions at the warehouse were the sure. reason that he was going to die. But no, I think he was going to die anyway. I think Silco was going to end up killing him anyway. Because Silco beat him down before that even happened, right? Yeah, I mean, I he know, was I already know. about dead. <laughs> so. Yeah. He had fallen into the vat at that point. In in her mind, you know that she thinks she, she thinks so. Yeah, I go totally. Yeah, she yes. feels guilty. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, it, it, so Caitlin I, was a character I liked the, on the the first time I watched. I I still like that character. Didn't really change my liking of her at all. Um, I like Echo, which turned out to be you know to me a very minor character the first time i watched it but on the rewatch it's like oh he might actually um have a lot to do you know he's he was instrumental in helping you know vi and um caitlin he looks like he's actually got sort of the another another way for the undercity to go mm -hmm. than just being a criminal enterprise um so he's gotten more interesting to me on the rewatch as well. Um, I liked Victor in the first season. I, I liked seeing, recognizing that there was more of his story that I had sort of not paid attention to the first time I watched it. Um, but <laughs> now I'm sort of like, Whoa, Victor, you're really going dark. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, which I, which was more tragic to me on the the first time around this time around it's like oh you've been you've been on this path um and jinx i still have the same amount of of sympathy for for her journey um and also the recognition that she is sort of a kid with arrested development so she can't really even make choices beyond her reactionary kinds of choices. Um, you know, when she, and it's even worse now because of whatever the, the shimmer did that, that shimmer rehab, I'll call it <laughs> did to her because, um, you know, she's laying on that table and the doctor is turning into Caitlin, you know, Caitlin's the one who's, who's uh, injecting her. Then sometimes it's Vi with her doing it um so it you know she is really fractured at this point um at which is it's just very sad you've mentioned yeah, i really oh go ahead brent i was just gonna say um echo is the the hope for that city right because him and yes. his forces yeah. Yeah. oppose yeah. silco and they oppose jinx so if that city's yep. gonna pull themselves out of this it's it's gonna be him and his people yeah yeah. Which is why it's nice to see that he's got Heimerdinger to, yeah. If any, it, because he could be the, you know, the person who can maybe do something with the, the arcane, the hex tech that um, Jason Victor didn't think of. Maybe he unites both cities because yeah. the council's pretty much dead now. 
well, a number of them. Not all. It of them. sure looked like she, that was what she aimed directly at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what that impact is if anybody makes it out of that. Yeah. You know, because presumably, say, yeah. Go ahead. Um. On on one of my rewatches of that last episode too, and and it didn't visually occur to me until the the, the last one I did. You know, again, the mad tea party scene with all that's going on, and we see again more examples of Jinx break from reality. You know, uh, every time, when, especially when when the Caitlin and Silco are just yelling at her. You know, remember Milo, and and they're all going to abandon you, and she's trying to deal with it. And we get the visuals as we have in several other scenes in the season of her seeing the like the scratch monsters and such and the thing. Yeah. I really noticed that at one key point in there when there was just so much going, you could tell she just couldn't deal with it. Visually on screen, you see her character very tiny and the monsters are huge mm. physically. You know, it's just the way it kind of caught my eye that time through that. Yes, she's been dealing with some of this and she even set some of it up with, you know, dolls and other things. But at that moment in her head, she's definitely that vision of herself. Her self-worth is just so small. And and it just again enforces a lot of what choices she's making and such. And there's another way this show has just done so much with dialogue, visuals, and everything. And it, it just really caught me and, and emotionally just made me say, Wow, that's she's just sees herself as so small. Yeah, that was a great callback, Kevin. You were talking about the monsters. That was the scene that, that Brent mentioned earlier when Vi is talking to Caitlin on the, I think it's the one where they're like spooning on the bed sort of, and she's telling her, I used to create these monsters and sometimes I would go too far and she'd get really scared and then I'd have to go kill the monster. And it's like, well, there's some mm. foreshadowing coming um, mm. because, uh, you know, Jinx, you know, she kind of, goes too far and recognizes what she's become. And then she has to sort of flip to reject all that because she's kind of overwhelmed and with the shame. If you think Jinx is a monster, Jinx, Jinx said that Vi created her. Yeah. Yes. So that, that goes right to it. Yeah. And, and yep. by the way, I, we've been talking about this and I wanted to make this point, which I, you guys have made, but I just wanted to state it out loud. Um, yeah, yeah. Jinx has had a lot of emotional damage. Obviously she's had a horrible childhood, multiple father figures dying, mother dying, sister losing her sister, she thought. But she's also genuinely psychotic at this point. Um, she's had a yes. psychotic break <laughs> at some point. And it was before, the, I think, the the rehabilitation. I think she was having the visions and the hearing voices and going crazy. I mean, remember when she shot the crow? She, she's psychotic. And sad that it happened, but at some point it did. And also that stuck out a little bit to me, too, just reinforcing some of that, is that... Um seen at the end of episode seven on the bridge um after the the fireflies as i call them have all gone off and it's carnage mm -hmm. and she's walking through there's an enforcer who's still barely alive moving and she walks past him and just shoots him without a yeah. thought without a look yeah. just complete murder on the spot not that yeah. her devices didn't but the difference between something she created that did it and her actually doing it and not even hesitate yeah 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 so, Whew. and like She's I said, I, I've said it. She, yeah. Well, <laughs> Potter is gone. Yeah. As Potter has left the building. Um, and, and again, I, I just am so fascinated with all of the videos on YouTube that I've been watching the reactors, mental health professionals <laughs> analyzing the show, mm -hmm. the dynamics of sister relationships, of duality, of, uh, you know, um, animation being able to have the same emotional punch as live action. It, it's just so fascinating to look at the way so many different people have been impacted by this show, this first season and, and, uh, you know, wanting to talk about it and wanting to share it, yeah. especially in YouTube videos and reactors. I mean, like I said, I, I have watched that last scene hundreds of times at this point between myself and the watches and just all the reactors I've watched. Um, and and so many gen genuine ones. Just you can tell these people are just gut punch like all of us in the moment, and being speechless uh, for those that don't you know edit around a lot of it. And it's and it's great to realize what you can do. I'm I'm 
excited and terrified for season two. Uh, I, now that I've gotten so invested, I'm worried what might be happening. I'm terrified too. I don't want Caitlin to die. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone is fair game, but literally anyone. Well, she's got a big target. Yes, she does. Oh, because no she's, doubt. She's Vi's uh, I mean, cupcake. You, you you mentioned her, Caitlin, grabbing the, the minigun and, and, and kind of not remembering the mistake that was. But Jinx was about to kill her. So she had to. She had no choice. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can't argue. I, no argument there. I mean, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened had, you know, they not had that confrontation and putting the gun down so Silco could reach. You know, where would or where could it have gone? She, she could have wiped out everybody at that table. Oh yeah, I think that yeah. was almost her intent <laughs> at the end. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, she wanted, she wanted her sister back. At the expense of the others, she didn't care. She wanted Caitlyn gone because Caitlyn she saw as, as something in the way. She Silco, that was not what she thought she wanted because Powder may be dead, but Powder's still in her head. You see Powder pop out every once in a while. You see the Powder ver- version of her. Uh, she imagines it. Um, so while it's still in her head, obviously she's not in control. But she wanted her sister back, and so she was willing to kill Silco, Caitlyn, very much so, Caitlyn. Um, but then Silco, she mistakenly, I, in my mind, <laughs> un, un, uh, ungagged him and he started planting these seeds of she's lying to you. She's, she's, she doesn't really love you anymore and all this other stuff that just screwed everything up. Yeah, it's just so much powerful stuff. Yeah, there's a lot to look at in this uh story these characters what's happening um and it's not uh, predictable at all in terms of you know in any other show or most other shows there would be a moment where she'd come back from the brink her sister you know it's yeah. it's uh um you know Willow and Xander and the yellow crayon. There there isn't going to be one of those (laughs) scenes in this show. I don't think there will be. Yeah, I don't think so. It's a very adult show for an animated show. So if you think it's a kid show, it's not. Very adult themes. No, jeez. Very adult characters. It's not Mm, at all. So, Kevin, you said you had watched a lot of reactors. Is there any other particular things that really struck you with? with any of those um no again a lot of the folks who did analysis i i just love that folks would take like that scene on the bridge mm-hmm. you know the echo and 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 jinx one and people doing you know 45 minute breakdowns <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> almost because it's it's you know having different things just strike a chord with someone or oh, i saw sure. a couple of reactors who are mental health professionals who kind of were you know, recommended to watch the show because it's something, you know, they could make some comments on. I saw one of them that, you know, for like the first half of the season, their reactions were good, but it was very measured, really. And and by the end, I could tell this this woman was emotionally on the edge of the seat. So it was, it was moving from, from analyzing it to reacting emotionally to it, which was very yeah. fascinating to kind of watch develop. So, and that, you know, when you can get someone who's, looks at any piece of entertainment from one point, and then all of a sudden that point shifts because of the way it's presented, that's when you really appreciate some amazing work. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm yeah. curious, because I haven't gone down this rabbit hole, but I could get interested in, is there anybody who kind of looks at this from the animation perspective? Because when they have these moments of her psychotic breaks or um, like that fight between her and Echo, I'm a little bit curious, like if there's some shorthand, because some of those really look like what in other places we see as, um, you know, nightmares, like the visualization of nightmares or other things. I was just curious if there's sort of a, a history in animation that's sort of tied to some of their style choices when they flip how things look, you know, because the animation style in, in that echo fight with her, with Jinx's 
quite different from some of the other stuff we see. So I was a little bit curious about that. And because there's so many choices that are being made and how they're visualizing the story, it, it would probably be really interesting, at least to me, to know a little bit more about that. Yeah. Kevin, did you come across any? like? I, I, yeah, I do not recall anything, but I, then again, I, I wasn't kind of like looking for that. If you know sure. I mean. Yeah, it, no, that's why I was just know, curious if. Uh, there might have been some there, but I was focusing a little more on the reactors or, or like the analysis, especially yep. the sister relationship stuff. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if there <laughs> isn't. I do know they were like 45 minute long. I don't want to call them behind the scenes, but kind of like that done by the, the animation company. Um, just kind of the story of how this came to be, how things were for quite a while went way off course. and everything looked like it might be shelved and then they you know had to do it again and just the immense immense amount of work that goes into doing it but i didn't see any specifically on that one okay i might just google around then for it yeah if i if i see it from some of the ones because now i've subscribed to several of the channels and in the typical youtube algorithm almost all the recommended videos are getting <laughs> the arcane or yeah. the warning oh, <laughs> that's about yeah. my entire feed at this point <laughs> so i may see one i'll let you know if i do Please do. <laughs> so any final thoughts as we head into season two or predictions? Oh, predictions is a good question. I'm, I'm excited for season two predictions. Um, I think echo is going to echo and Heimerdinger are going to somehow end up um, uniting uh, everybody and, and sort of shepherding in a, a piece after whatever happens, happens. That's my one prediction, I guess. So I think they're going to survive and they're going to play a key role in kind of rebuilding a new council that, you know, and a new city that encompasses everybody um, a little more fairly, probably. Um, I, I think since it doesn't necessarily stick to the video game lore, I don't think, uh, you know, if anybody who knows the video game lore doesn't, I don't think the show necessarily needs to stick to that. So there's there's more predictions, but I'll, I'll let you guys, that was my number one prediction was Heimerdinger and Echo are going to, play a big part in the shepherding in the piece after the big thing that's coming. <laughs> I'm thinking that somewhere in the first, maybe the beginning of the second episode, by that point, we're going to have a surprise loss of a character. Um, it just seems like, and I have no idea who I could have a clue, but <laughs> not Caitlin. I, just, I know, I know <laughs> we don't want, but, or almost any of them at this point. All of them have got such fascinating bits that I oh, want to learn more about. It could be Savika. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, did, I think story-wise, something is going to kind of happen there from all of us that have been, you know, speculating on some things or talking about favorite characters that story-wise, it's going to just demonstrate that because this whole season and, and likely the whole two, or it's, it's that whole, you know, what could have been view of things that something will happen there well i'm assuming we're going to have um similar to the moment when silco and jace sort of make their truce and have a plan that we're going to have something undo it so i'm assuming we're going to have another i'll call it lucy with the football moment uh between vi and jinx yeah that's a safe bet I yeah. think. Um, but my I also other, think we'll uh, have a full out war, right? Yeah. yeah. The trailer hints at that. Yeah. Um, I think my my other real prediction that I care about is, uh, and I got to be selfish on this one too, being the big ship I am. Um, both Caitlin and Vi will live, and they will live happily ever after. There you go. <laughs> and, and talking about that now brings up the speculation on the nature of what the show has been certainly through season one is it going to be a happy ending though could, could this show end on a happy note it can't end I mean, on a cliffhanger as, come it, on it can only, oh, no, no, i'm not no. saying it's on a cliffhanger but i don't know if it could it, it can't end true to a, itself and do that i don't think it can end on a happy note it could end on a hopeful note um, i think it's going to end on a tra tragic and hopeful note i think i yeah. honestly i don't want i didn't want to say this prediction but I think Jinx is going to die. Yeah, I, I think, think she's going to die gonna in her sister's him. arms too. Oh yeah. God! Um, You're going to have to scrape but I think me off the floor. That tragic <laughs> ending is what's going to set up the hopeful ending. I think of the kind of rebuilding. 
Yeah. La 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 la. Not listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will find out shortly because uh, season two is coming back in just a couple of days. Yep. What are our plans time. when it comes back? What are we going to do, Wendy? Um, I think we're going to do more of these. So we'll yeah. have another segment of chapters, um, which obviously will be spoiler filled for whatever we've seen up to yeah, that, up to point. that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, knowing, so we... knowing me too, we're going to, we're going to have to make sure that we can record for the sets before I watch the next set. There's no way I can watch the next yes. set and not yeah. talk about it in the first set or you yes. know, third to two. Yeah. 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 Too, mu too much builds on top. Yeah, too much builds. Sure. Yeah. And, and this yep. Saturday drop, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to watch them fast if we want to record that weekend. Yeah. And I'm going to have to stay off social media or something probably because if anything big happens, it's just going to be too popular. Yep. But yeah, it'll, it'll be fun to be talking as they're happening and speculating what's next as yes. it's happening. The season one thing was fun. It was. Hopefully yeah. folks and will come hey, back for season two. I got to give major props to Brent to pushing to say you really should watch this. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, it took me you know almost two years after release to get to it. Kevin's not an animation guy. If you don't listen to our regular podcast, he, no, <laughs> not big on animation. All. I have a, I have a track yeah. record of two successes so far: Ruby and Arcane. <laughs> yep. Yes, you have. Wait, didn't we have another one? Probably. I just thought uh, it was I've you. watched an episode of Harley Quinn, but I haven't gotten. Oh, that's that probably is the it. other yeah. one. Yep, that's the other one. Okay. Well, with that, I want to thank everybody for listening or watching or both. And I want to thank Kevin and Brent for a lot of fun talking about Arcane. And we will see you again very soon talking about season two. Catch you next time. Take care, all. <laughs>